So one thing I've done here um, is kind of set out the panels in two different orientations. I did this in SketchUp too, so I'm kind of just double checking my math. Um, but basically I want to orient the sheets so that A, I have the least amount of waste, and B, um, it's the least amount of work. Uh, you know, I don't want to be cutting a bunch of little patches and um, having a bunch of odd cuts and all that kind of stuff. So you saw when I did the staggered full eight, four by eight sheets lengthwise, um, basically those open gaps, there'd be a lot of, there'd be a lot of waste cuts in there. And then at the end, there was like a couple, like two or three inch cuts, which seem odd to me. Um, I don't like having tiny little slivers, uh, you know, I mean, I know it's all going to get glued together, but, um, it's just not really the way I like to work. I like to work in larger chunks. So with this, um, all these panels get cut uniformly to the width. There's about a foot and a half of waste on each panel, but those weight, that waste can be used as side, side panels, uh, for, uh, going behind the rim joists. Um, and also they can be used on the surface uh, between our sill plate and our floor joist system. Um, and there's a really good video uh, that, uh, that was shot at Iron Eagle. Um, I can't remember the name, uh, but I'll link to it in this video. Uh, but that video really goes over how this installation and floor system should be put together. Uh, and they've bought a lot of Iron Eagle trailers and they've built a lot of trailers. Um, so I trust them in the way that they've built this system. Basically, um, we're trying to get as much um, separation between our wood and our steel trailers as possible um, because those two contacting uh, create a thermal bridge. So by separating it by this one inch formular, we're getting an R5 across the entire trailer and then in the cavity area, we're gonna fill with cellulose. Um, so we'll get somewhere around an R21 to R23 total in the floor. Um, and then these small areas between the sill plates and uh, the open cavity uh, is gonna be R5. But that's just a small section around, around the perimeter, um, about a two to three inch section. So uh, mostly areas that you're not gonna be stepping on with your feet. They're gonna be under cabinets, they're gonna be under furniture. Um, so you won't really feel that cold. Um, you know, you'll lose a little bit of heat um, due to it, um, but you won't feel that cold change under your feet um, unless you're purposely walking around the edges of, the, of your floor. So I'm on day one and a half, um, getting the formular all cut, put in, uh, starting to put in the rim joist. You can't see me because I don't have any light on my face. Um, getting the formular in, getting the rim joist in, um, in the bump out on the front, uh, the bolts were not, or the holes were not cut in the frame. Uh, for the half inch bolts to hold the rim joist, so I had to cut those myself and I figured something out <laughs> when you're uh, when you're cutting and you got hot metal coming down uh, it melts formula formula so um, when I do the next when I do the second side um, I'm gonna put something down so I don't do that again <laughs> uh, you know I mean it's no big deal it's not gonna uh, uh, cause any major harm or anything like that, but um, good to know. Hot metal shavings melt formula. So, just as I was about ready to hang my last floor joist last night, um, we had a little bit of a rain event uh, so I had to quickly grab the tarp and 
cover everything up because uh, I did not want <laughs> that uh, fresh subfloor cavity getting full of water um, with all that foam and everything in there. So that kind of ended my day yesterday. Um, today, the plan is to get the last Dallas, Dallas drinking the water out of the tarp. Um, get the last floor joist hung. Start getting the uh, bottom plates um, laid out. Get the subfloor cut and kind of set in place. And then I have to do that, um, that perimeter of Fumular uh, outside of the, um, the floor cavity. So I'll kind of go into each of those details as I go along, but that's kind of the plan for today. Fingers crossed, I can get my plumbing in, I can get my cellulose in, and I can get my subfloor down and sealed. Um, and then start laying out my walls. That'd be really cool if I could get to that point today. It's 10 o'clock now. I have till uh, it gets dark about eight. So I've got a good 10 hours worth of work I can do. I'm excited. And the dogs are super excited. So I started out here first by uh, scribing a line on my board at two inches. That's the same height as the rest of the trailer holes, so I figured I'd match. Um, and then I did three inch spacing from the sides so that my inch and a half <clears throat> uh, floor joists can go right here and I can still get a fender washer on there. Um, so started with that and then took it through the foam and then uh, drilled the sides here. You can see my screen glued in the corner there. No, you can't because the strap's in the way. Um, so I got the screen in the corner there, and that's my five inch bolt that's gonna go through the rim joist, through the foam, and through the trailer support. All right, so I wanted to give you a quick look at what is going on here um, and how the layering worked. So um, the first layer is this one inch foamular. Um, and then on top of that, are these end pieces, and these um, cause a thermal break between the trailer and the sill plates, and these end joists. And then the sill plates, sorry, the sill plates, the rim joists are um, bolted through the trailer with carriage bolts, and then uh, 24 on center, the floor joists are hung. Uh, this floor joist here is my master. So um, 48 from here to my sill plate um, so that my first sheet is on center. Um, so this spacing here is just short of 24 inches. This is a 24 inch bay, this is like 22. Um, so then from this master plate, or from this master joist, that's where I laid out the rest of my joists, 24 on center. So there's a few areas here where my foam cuts weren't perfect. Um, they come up a little bit, so then my other foam isn't going to sit flush. So I got this Dremel Multimax. I've actually had this thing for like five years and have only used it like maybe four or five times. <laughs> so it's a great little use for it. Um, so that's going to save me a ton of time um, being able to do that. So then all of my foam is either flush or below uh, deck height and isn't affecting the other layer of foam that I'm going to put on top. All right. So right now I'm trying to make a design decision that pretty much affects the entire design of the house. And that is where do I position the sill plates? Um, 
and where does where does the sheeting end? So if you look down here at the trailer, one school of thought is to take the plate all the way to the end of the trailer and then bring the sheeting down past the edge of the trailer. Now, a benefit of that is you uh, absolutely get um, a better uh, chance of, of, of moisture passing this joint and not getting and not slipping under it and not getting into the trailer. Um, of course, I will have sill gasket down here, which, you know, definitely does help with, with moisture, but it's not a guarantee. Um, so that's the benefit of doing this um, orientation. The other way is to bring this in a half an inch and have the sheeting stop on the trailer. So benefits of that are I get a little bit of help when I'm hanging sheeting. Um, the trailer is going to be my support, so I'm not holding up this 4 by 8 sheet, um, trying to get it perfectly um, positioned height-wise on the trailer here. Um, the downside is that I have to uh, use some flashing seal, some flashing tape, um, to go the entire length of the trailer and wrap from the sheeting under the trailer. Um, and even, even with this design, I'd probably do that anyway, uh, just because the one thing I do not want is water intrusion. Um, so anything that I can do um, at this stage to prevent water from getting in the trailer, I'm going to do. Hey, how about we put my face in the shot too, so you can not see half of my mouth moving. So I'm really at a dilemma here. Um, it's pretty much this, this minute I have to make the decision, do I go flush or do I bring it in and have the sheeting set on top? Um, so another, another factor in this is, is this, um, this flashing here on, on the, uh, on the wheel wells. So I'm gonna kick off my glasses real quick so that I can see what I'm doing. Uh, so if we go flush here, um, when the sheeting comes along the edge here, there's gonna be this eighth inch kind of hump in the sheeting, uh, which you know isn't the best thing, um, mostly because I'll have to fill that with foam with spray foam um but also you know it it literally creates a little bit of a hump in the sheeting which i'm not sure if you're really going to notice it once the siding and everything is on um, that there's that little hump there but if the sheeting was on the outside again you're getting that drip edge um and we would still flash uh to this to this piece with the flashing tape now if it goes in like this then the sheeting goes behind right and it stays flush to the wall and then the flashing tape would go still go over this so you still get your water um your water flashing that way with the with the flashing tape but you're solely relying on the tape instead of the sheeting relying on sheeting and tape so I'm just kind of sitting here right now trying to figure out which direction I'm going to go. Uh, but I got to pull the trigger pretty soon because I can't delay the rest of the build based on this decision. So in the next video, you'll, you'll see what I decide on. All right. So I made some progress. Um, both my dad and Taylor's dad are contractors. Probably got like 70 years of experience between the two of them. So I posed the question to both of them on um, where this bottom plate should uh, should sit, and they both said flush. Um, that 
down there at the tra at the um, trailer flange. There's a lot of ways to work around that. Um, either overlap the sheeting or even um, notch the sheeting so it's flush. So that's what we went with. Um, I have these bolted down and then I made these uh, spacers or purlins or whatever you want to call them. Um, I just ripped them down from the 2x6 stock that I had uh, laying in the, in the junk pile. Um, so yeah, now I'm going to cut the foam pieces uh, in between and get my sheeting cut and then I can start filling cellulose and laying sheeting down. Super excited about that. Um, ahead of schedule for today. Or at least I feel like I'm ahead of schedule. <laughs> as long as it doesn't decide to rain on me. There's a few dark clouds. But there's a lot of sun too. So um, I'm excited to get this subfloor down. And the dogs are having fun too.